Hello everyone. Welcome to another video on molecular orbital theory. Today we will discuss about the formation of molecular orbitals. First we begin with the different types of molecular orbitals. The sigma, pi and delta. First we will discuss about the sigma molecular orbitals. Then the pi molecular orbitals. The delta molecular orbitals. And finally, we will understand about the non-bonding molecular orbitals. The different types of molecular orbitals, sigma, pi and delta, are formed by the combination of different types of atomic orbitals. When the combining atomic orbitals approach along the internuclear axis, we get the formation of sigma molecular orbitals. So the combinations can be SS, SPX, and a PXPX. When the combining atomic orbitals overlap laterally or sideways, we have the formation of the pi molecular orbitals. So the atomic orbitals can be PY, PY, PZ, PZ a p and a d orbital or two d orbitals. The delta molecular orbital can be formed by the combination of two d orbitals. So first we will understand the formation of sigma molecular orbitals which are formed by the combination of two s atomic orbitals. Now the s orbitals are spherically symmetric. The electron density is uniformly distributed around the nucleus. In the earlier video, we have understood the combination of atomic orbitals, which leads to the formation of molecular orbitals. We have discussed the LCAO, that is the linear combination of atomic orbitals principle. We have studied that the atomic orbitals can be represented as wave functions. Now here we have two atomic orbitals with the sign plus. When these two atomic orbitals approach each other, this is said to be a constructive interference. And this results in the formation of a molecular orbital which is represented as sigma and it is a bonding molecular orbital. Now in case of sigma bonding molecular orbital, there is high electron density between the two nuclei. Hence, the repulsion between the two nuclei is less. And the bonding molecular orbital has a lower energy than that of the atomic orbitals which have combined. The molecular orbital is more stable and it also favors the bonding. When we have the uh, two S atomic orbitals combining, such that we have one plus and the other one is minus. So this is a destructive interference resulting in the formation of a molecular orbital which is denoted as sigma star s. Now this is the sigma antibonding molecular orbital. Now we can see that between the two nuclei there is no electron density and this point is called as a node and the plane passing through it is called as a nodal plane. The electron density here is concentrated away from the nuclei. And as there is no electron density between the two nuclei, there is more repulsion between them. Hence, the energy of the antibonding molecular orbital is higher. And these uh, molecular orbitals are less stable and they do not favor the bonding. We can see here that the sigma molecular orbitals are cylindrically symmetric about the internuclear axis. The other combination which results in the formation of sigma molecular orbital is S and P. Now the S orbital will combine with a P orbital which has the lobes along the internuclear axis. 
the p orbitals are dumbbell shape on one side we have the sign plus and on the other side it is minus so when we have the plus plus signs coming together we get the formation of a bonding molecular orbital the plus and minus signs coming together results in the antibonding molecular orbital where there is a node present the third possibility is when the two p orbitals combine now both the p orbitals should have the lobes pointing along the internuclear axis so we can have a combination of two px atomic orbitals so in a similar way we can have formation of a bonding molecular orbital and the other is the formation of antibonding molecular orbital with a node present the next type of molecular orbital is the pi molecular orbital now in this case the combining orbitals are perpendicular to the internuclear axis and the overlap is a lateral or a sideways overlap which results in the formation of a pi bonding molecular orbital and a pi antibonding molecular orbital so they are denoted as pi and pi star so we will have a look at these combinations so we can have py py or pz pz orbitals combining so in the first case we can see the formation of a pi molecular orbital which is a bonding molecular orbital and in this case there is no electron density along the internuclear axis the electron density is concentrated above and below the axis the other combination will give the antibonding molecular orbital and in this case there are two nodes present and we can see here that in case of the pi molecular orbitals they are unsymmetrical with respect to rotation around the internuclear axis the second combination can be of one p orbital and another one which is the d orbital these two orbitals should have the lobes perpendicular to the axis so here is a p orbital and the other one is a d orbital plus plus and minus minus signs coming together so we have a pi molecular orbital the other combination will give a pi antibonding molecular orbital in case of the bonding molecular orbital there is one node while in case of the antibonding molecular orbital there are two nodes we can distinguish between the sigma and pi molecular orbitals the sigma molecular orbitals are formed by the overlap of the atomic orbitals having the lobes along the internuclear axis and when the lobes of the orbitals are perpendicular to the internuclear axis we have formation of the pi molecular orbitals the overlap of the orbitals in case of sigma molecular orbitals is head on or axial while a sideways or lateral overlap gives pi molecular orbitals then regarding the electron density in case of the sigma molecular orbitals the electron density is concentrated along the internuclear axis whereas in case of pi molecular orbitals the electron density is zero along the internuclear axis it is present above and below the axis the sigma orbitals have cylindrical symmetry around the internuclear axis while the pi molecular orbitals do not have cylindrical symmetry around the axis now the next is the delta molecular orbital 
delta molecular orbitals can be formed when two d orbitals combine there is a sideways overlap of the two d orbitals such that we have the overlap of the four loops so here we have the formation of a delta bonding molecular orbital finally we will see the formation of non bonding molecular orbitals these orbitals do not participate in the bonding now the first combination of the combining atomic orbitals is where the s orbital combines with a py or pz atomic orbital earlier we have seen that when s orbital combines with px orbital there is formation of sigma molecular orbital but when we have s and py or pz we can see here that on one side we have plus plus combination and on the other side it is plus minus so the effects get cancelled and we get non bonding molecular orbitals similarly when we have two p orbitals which combine now these two p orbitals if they are parallel to each other we get the formation of pi molecular orbitals if the two p orbitals approach along the internuclear axis we get sigma molecular orbital but the third possibility is when we have the two p orbitals such that they are perpendicular to each other then this will result in a non bonding molecular orbital another possibility is when a p orbital combines with a d orbital so in this case again we get a non bonding molecular orbital we have understood here the formation of sigma molecular orbitals pi molecular orbitals delta molecular orbitals and finally the molecular orbitals which do not participate in the bonding which are the non bonding molecular orbitals thank you for watching the video in case of any queries feel free to contact me at mnchy@gmail.com thank you